Now let's cross the waters quite a far way across and hear from Telstra's executive director who's leading Australia's first 5G rollout, Chana Senevaratna. Thanks for that introduction. So uh, what I'm going to do today is uh, give you a little bit of insight uh, into Telstra's journey to 5G, which is, uh, has been four years long, but I'm going to give it to you in uh, less than 13 minutes. Um, so uh, I guess the first thing and the first challenge for Telstra is in terms of how do you roll out a 5G network in a country the size of Australia, over 7 million square kilometers. Um, and when you look at the, the population, it's only 25 million. And that's concentrated in around the eastern seaboard, but we've got substantial numbers of people in regional Australia who always demand an equivalent service as good as their cousins in the city. And the answer is that you, you don't immediately, uh, because we already have a substantially brilliant uh, 3G and 4G network, which covers 2.5 million square kilometers um, and over 99% of the population. But we have started and we have launched our 5G network, and we did that. Uh, in May of this year. And what we've done is to launch it across 10 cities, um, capital cities, and into some regional centers. Now, um, it, over the next 12 months, we're going to expand that coverage fivefold, and we're going to move into 25 additional cities. Now, the thing is um, that what we've launched with is our first use case, which is 4G offload. And that's an obvious one. Our 4G network and our data growth is increasing 40% year on year. So 5G coming into play has been very useful to us. And we're already starting to see that impacting as we start to see 4G offloading in the CBD areas of our capital cities. But as we know, um, and as a few speakers have said before, the consumer use case is interesting, and Telstra will certainly play in terms of, um, you know, in the area of cloud gaming and immersive entertainment. But really for us, in a world where we see single-digit revenue growth, the sweet spot for us is around B2B and the enterprise use cases. So that is very much dictated around technology advances that are coming. Uh, we heard Nick refer to uh, edge compute, and I'll say something about that shortly. But also, uh, in Telstra's landscape, we, we have launched our network uh, on mid-band in the spectrum, which is the CBRS spectrum in the US, but it's a limited amount of spectrum. So um, we are anticipating further auction of spectrum to get access to the millimeter wave bands in the 26 gig range. Uh, that's going to give us 10 times to 12 times the amount of spectrum that we have today. The other piece of um, advancement that we're looking at is the advent of standalone. So today, most operators who've launched their 5G networks are using a 5G radio network working into a 4G legacy network. And uh, we are all anticipating, and we're actually currently doing lab trials of the 5G standalone and the next generation core network. So that's another building block along the way towards unleashing the power of 5G. But one of the things that we obviously realized uh, two or three years ago is that to generate interest and to develop B2B use cases, you can't just build it and expect them to come. That's just not gonna work. So two years ago, we opened a 5G innovation lab. And we, we chose um, the Gold Coast of Australia. Um, it's a very, for those who've been to Australia, it's a great holiday location. But it's also a very useful place for us to do and create an innovation lab. It's got two universities that we can source um, you know, smart graduates from. It's also got a burgeoning um, software industry and also gaming. So it's a great place for us to source um, and where we can actually do three things. We test our 5G network features there, and we've done that consistently over two years with our, our vendor partner, Ericsson. And there's a list of uh, 
Australia first and world first that we've accomplished at that innovation center. But importantly, one of the key things there is how we invite industry to come to that innovation center because you know, there's a lot of excitement about 5G, but a lot of industry don't really know how they're gonna use it. So the innovation center has been fantastic in terms of showcasing the capability of 5G, the key features of 5G, and then importantly, understanding the problems that these various industry segments are trying to solve. And then we use that innovation center as a place for collaboration and co-creation. And that's absolutely critical because, you know, it is going to take some time and the solutions that we develop are going to be something that you can't simply create ourselves. You've got to do it in partnership. You've heard that said by a number of speakers before. We are not going to be successful unless we collaborate not only with other people in our industry but across, right across the ecosystem. So that's been key to us and, and, that's, and, and that's the first of our innovation centers. Uh, obviously, we'd like to uh, open some more as time goes on. Um, in terms of the use cases that um, Telstra is looking at, um, as I said, we've launched with the mobility use case, and that was an obvious one. And our coverage, uh, you know, we've launched in the CBDs, and we're building out a con contiguous coverage in our, uh, in our main major cities. Um, I know in the US, for example, the launch was with fixed wireless access, but uh, as much as we might want to do it, we can't do it for various regulatory reasons, which I, can't, I won't go into today. Um, so mobility and the mobile use cases first. But in looking at the use cases that we're looking to develop at, and, and co-create in that innovation center, you can see the things up on the, on, this, on the slide there. We certainly, like when we group those um, use cases, we look at 5G industry solutions, so around automation. Then we look at um, private, uh, private 5G. So Australia has got a big mining industry and we have got a lot of interest and in, in, uh, some of the big mining companies are customers of ours. So they are very much into how do they automate operations and, and particularly underground and using low latency capabilities. So we're working with them. But also another major use case is around enterprise and companies and that's where we've done a brilliant piece of collaboration with the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, one of Australia's major banks, and Ericsson, where we actually showcased the capability of 5G, so 5G RAN, but also edge compute, and how we um, help a bank, and their vision, this bank's vision, is to create the infrastructure-free infrastructure free branch. So in other words, not only do we bring network functions closer to the edge to develop the low latency use case, but the sec secondary benefit for us is how does the bank offload their IT workloads onto that same edge? And what you see there is now a merging of networks and IT coming together, running on the same edge. And that's a very useful uh, opportunity for, for CSBs uh, into the future. So what we've done with, with, uh, with Ericsson and, and CBA is to go to that first stage, and we demonstrated that at an industry show. And now we're going to go to the next stage, and we're actually going to operationalize that into some of the bank branches, because we want to take it beyond simply um, doing shifting IT workloads, but we want to develop use cases like video analytics for security, et cetera. So that's exciting. And then we're going to move on to industrial IoT. And there's a second piece of collaboration that we're doing with Ericsson and also with an industrial partner who are creating a um, IoT precinct outside of um, Brisbane in a place called Toowoomba, and that's about advanced agricultural uh, research. And we are working with them to create industrial IoT use cases and enabling that precinct using 5G RAN. And again, with the edge compute bringing and creating low latency use cases. And speaking of that, I think we shouldn't underestimate, I mean, the, the word sometimes can trip off easily in terms of edge compute. Right, so we are actively working on that. So when we look at our footprint, we have already identified all the places that we want to create edge compute into. There's over 500 locations that we've identified already. And so we're working now towards disaggregating our core network and taking it out of the edge. And it's not a question that we're just gonna deploy it. 
Because again, it's not a question of you build it and, and hope they'll come, because that's not efficient, right? You have to work in collaboration with individual partners to deploy at the edge, create the use case. But the important thing that you have to do is that you have to create a framework, right? So you don't create point solutions. You create a framework in terms of the edge compute, the architecture, the orchestration that you can then replicate into different verticals. Otherwise, it's just not efficient in terms of your um, capex. Now, the other thing that, and, and that's an insight for us, is that we don't want to wait because we, uh, you know, as CSPs, that is, that is an area that we absolutely want to get into in terms of edge compute, but there are others who are interested in that sphere as well. The hyperscalers obviously want to get up there and offer their capability. But we as CSPs, and, you know, and that's the important thing to understand, is that you have to tell the story of why, and for us, why Telstra? And the story for us is, well, we have access to a 5G RAN. We have got the real estate that we can deploy our edge compute on. We have got the engineering smarts to create a ecosystem which has got the right level of security, um, intercept, and orchestration that we develop with our, our partners to create a much higher level of value. And yes, of course, we can open up the edge in terms of open APIs to, to allow them third parties, but what we don't want to do is to be confined to being just providing connectivity. We have to be able to extract additional value going up the stack. So that's what we're doing in that sphere. And the last piece I just want to leave you with is around orchestration. And, and that is something that, that is, you know, it, it kind of, again, trips off the tongue quite easily. But if you look, for example, in 5G, we talk about network slicing. Now, the reality is that no network has got um, equipment from a single provider. So, yes, we are very proud to be working with Ericsson. We have an Ericsson RAN, but the reality is our IP edge is from uh, you know, Juniper. Our IP core is from Cisco. So when you start talking about network slicing, true network slicing end-to-end, -end, you've got to work with industry and you've got to work with standards-based constructs to be able to create true end-to-end -end slicing. Um, and that's one of the things that we're certainly um, encouraging you know, our partners to do. And particularly, and, and I'll, I'll sort of make a comment like even within Telstra, um, we've got brilliant engineers who often want to create their own solutions. Um, but one of the things that we should never forget is that creating your own point solutions or creating your own APIs can be very expensive and you build in long-term cost. So particularly in this forum, uh, one of the things that I'm certainly driving towards is to make sure that when we do create these environments that we actually use open APIs and TMF APIs because that's the way we collaborate effectively across the industry. I'll leave you with that thought. Thank you.